Section 10.3, the gas laws. So the gases were some of the very first things studied in science, in physics and in chemistry. Um, 18th century, a lot of these are. Some of, some of them into the 17th century. So um, they're very old. And, and what you're going to see is since they're all related to each other, many of these people simply isolated two different um, two different components of, of the gases, such as temperature and volume, and showed the relationship between them. And then somebody else did the volume and the pressure and showed the relationship between them. So eventually we're going to take all of these gas laws and put them together into one law. In fact, I never memorize these individual gas laws. I like to give um, credit to the people who did the work, but I always start with what I'll teach you later as the, the ideal gas law. And the, the ideal gas law is pressure times volume equals number of moles times some constant that we'll talk about later times temperature. So pressure and volume um, on the same side of the, of, the, of the equal sign is going to be inverse. That means as one of them goes up, say pressure goes up, the volume goes down. So imagine that you've got a stress doll and you squeeze that stress doll and you reduce its volume, the pressure goes up and the eyes pop out. So the volume, the volume and the pressure are inversely related. If you increase the temperature of something, since that's on the opposite sides of the equal sign, the pressure will go up. That's why you don't put a, spray, a, a, a closed can in a fire because it'll explode, it'll make a bomb, and you don't want shrapnel going all over your uh, birthday party people. So number of moles is the same. If you blow into a balloon, the volume goes up. So all these components of gases, so the pressure, the volume, the number of moles, and the temperature are all related in what are called the gas laws. So we're going to extract two at a time as we look at these four uh, gas laws named after the fellows who came up with them. Okay, the first we're going to study is boil. The volume of a fixed quantity of gas, okay, so we're looking at volume, the volume of a, of a quantity of gas is inversely proportional to the pressure. So we're looking at these two. Anytime that you have two parts on the same side of the equal sign, they're inverse relation. So an inverse relationship is going to always have a curved line. So as one goes up, the other goes down. So let's look uh, here. As volume goes down, okay, as volume goes down, the pressure is going to go up. That's why you can't have a straight line. You can have a straight line if you do one over pressure. Okay, so one over pressure is going to go up because that's that's inverted. But uh, as volume goes up, the one over pressure goes uh, goes up. As as volume goes up, the the pressure goes down. Okay, so those are, that's the relationship. It's an inverse. So PV equals some kind of constant. That was what Boyle found. Charles, a uh, French fellow, Charles in the 18th century, studied the volume and the temperature of gases. And he found that the volume and the temperature of gases are directly proportional. So imagine solving for volume. I could put this K up here. And as V goes up, T goes up. Anything opposite sides of the equal sign, as one goes up, the other goes up. So here's volume. As the volume of um, something goes up, the temperature goes up. We would see it differently. We would see it backwards. If, if uh, for instance, you have a, a balloon and uh, it's got helium in it and you put it uh, in a cold room, that the balloon would deflate a little bit. If you put it in a hot car, the balloon would inflate again. So the temperature, as the temperature goes up, the volume is going to go up. As the temperature goes down, the volume goes down. That's Charles's law. Guy Lussac was a hot air balloon fella, and he did a lot of a study as he was trying to expand that sport uh, right after it had been invented. And he came up with the conclusion that at a given temperature and pressure, the volumes of the gases that react with one another are in ratios of small numbers. Now, that is not as good as the gas laws. In fact, Avogadro. Uh, an Italian fellow had to take Guy Lussac's data that he did and actually reinterpreted it. So uh, Avogadro gets credit for this law, even though Guy Lussac did all the work. 
Um, but basically, he's saying that the the amount the amount of moles of a gas is directly related to its volume. Okay, so we're going to see uh, that Avogadro. That's what Avogadro's law is: is that uh, vo volume over uh, number of moles is equal to a constant. So add more air to a balloon, it gets bigger. It's a pretty pretty obvious. But Guy Lussac did the work, and so I wanted to give him a little little page on this on this teaching. But Avogadro still gets credit for it, so it's called Avogadro's law, and the volume of gas is directly related to the number of moles in the gas. So more air in the balloon, the balloon gets bigger. Less air in the balloon, air gets smaller. Here's the explanation that he made of Avogadro's work or uh, Guy Lussac's work. Guy Lussac says two volumes of hydrogen plus one volume of oxygen is going to create two well, uh, volumes of water vapor. So, so the observation uh, was made by Guy Lussac, and the explanation was come up with Avogadro. Avogadro could see what Guy Lussac's data was actually saying and, and interpreted it a little clearer. And we can see this. This is how we balance equations. We would take, in order to make water, we're going to need to have as much hydrogen as, as we have at the end. We have to have it at the beginning. The same amount of oxygen we have at the beginning is at the end. So we call this stoichiometry. The idea that the masses are its conservation of mass. The same amount of mass at the beginning, same amount of mass at the end. So we can thank Avogadro for that.